Carter Terenzini. I am the Templeton Town Administrator. And after a little bit of a hiatus uh, for town meeting, we're back with our regular talk of the town for July of 2018. With me today is Jackie Prime, who is the director at the Boynton uh, Public Library. And she also has a new role that she's going to talk about a little bit today. Uh, but let's start with Jackie. Uh, why don't you tell uh, folks who may not know you a little bit about, um, you know, where your, what your background is, what you went to school for, kinds of jobs you have. Give them a sense of who you are. Okay. Um, I was born and raised in the city of Lowell, and um, I graduated from Brandeis University with a degree in English literature. Um, while I was debating whether or not to go to graduate school, I took a job at the Pollard Memorial Library, which is Lowell's big city library. Um, I worked there for three years, helped to run an adult literacy program, um, which was very, very rewarding. Um, and that's pretty much where I fell in love with libraries in general. And, uh, and then I sort of switched gears and I, and I accepted a job as an activities director in a tiny little nursing home just north of Lowell. Um, and I always say that job grew my soul. It was just a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, helped me to learn a lot about how to listen to people and relate to people. Um, and at that time, my then husband and I were building a home out here in Templeton. And so I um, wanted to see what my new library would be like where I lived and dropped in and met Mrs. Henshaw, who was the director at the time. And she um, let me know that she would be retiring soon and encouraged me to apply when the ad appeared. And um, I never did see the ad being busy moving and <coughs> pregnant with my first child. And, uh, but she, she found me and she tracked me down and, and um, asked me if I was still interested in applying. The and pluses and minuses of a small, <laughs> easily found, the pluses this and minuses true. of a small town life. <laughs> And um, so, yeah, I, I applied, I interviewed, and um, I've been there 23 years. So, now, Jackie, you, you said you uh, chose to um, uh, come out here and, and build your house. What brought you all from Lowell to Templeton? That's a good, uh, very different cities, very different uh, ethnic, social, economic backgrounds, a, a goodly distance further um, further west. Mm. So what, what brought you to Templeton? Uh, well, growing up in Lowell, I didn't know that Templeton even existed, but my my husband, my then husband, was um, from Hubbardston originally, so oh, okay. he was familiar with this area. So there was an area connection yes. through that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, in addition to having been our librarian uh, for 23 years, uh, and we're Expanded some hours this yes. uh, current fiscal year that we're in, fiscal 18. Um, we were able to go from, what, what did we go from again? We went from 25, yep. which was the minimum required by the state, um, to 30, and that's been wonderful. Now, when you say the minimum required by the state, that's they can't mandate those un, if we're willing to give up a, a grant that they give us, right? That's right. So the minimum is to <clears> achieve... <throat> Uh, this grant from the state. Right, it's one of the requirements. There are, um, I think, four altogether. The minimum hours, the... Um, and, and is that by population yes. size or something? Okay. Yes. Um, there's a, a, a appropriation requirement for our annual budget um, that needs to be at a certain level. Um, there's a book expenditure requirement, book materials expenditure, and then the uh, credentials of the director. Okay. So and how much do we get in that grant? What is that, about eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000, something is. in that area? Yes, exactly. And then you can use that for, for equipment, for books, repairs, is it basically for anything Correct. for the library, or is it restricted? It is not restricted. Okay. Okay. So uh, in order to get that ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 a year, and that's subject to annual appropriation by the legislature, I just want to make sure I have this. For a town of our size, we we must be open at least 25 hours. Yes. Which we were able to expand this year to 30. Um, 
every year the amount of local money we have has to go up a little bit. Yes. Is it the famous two and a half? It, it is. It, the two and a half is in there. It's two and a half percent <coughs> over the average of the last three years. So it's kind of a rolling average. Yes. Okay. Um, and then we have to expend a certain amount of the money on, on, on material. Is that books, videos, magazines? Yes. Periodicals, everything? Anything that can be borrowed by our patrons. Oh, anything that you can lend out. Right. Okay. So an encyclopedia that can't be lent out doesn't count. But Probably the, not, right. But the new books sure. and such. And, and how much of our money do we have to spend on that, roughly? We have to spend 19% of our total appropriation. Um, that can come from different sources as long as we reach that mm -hmm. minimum of 19%. Uh, and then, depending upon the size of the library, uh, there's different certification requirements, or is it basically you're a certified librarian here, you're a certified librarian anywhere? In towns with populations of under 10,000, um, the and that's still us. It is us. Yeah. Um, the requirement it, for the librarian is that he or she hold a bachelor's degree mm -hmm. um, and have completed. Uh, believe there were five, it was a long time ago, five courses with the Board of Library Commissioners. And then do you have some uh, periodic things that you have to There are, but it's, it's not similar to a school system where they're mandated, um, they're encouraged. Uh, yeah, my, my wife's professional PDPs, and professional development points or whatever, oh yeah, that's a <laughs> different conversation. That, that one's fun. Now, in addition to uh, working for us, you've worked for another uh, area library at the same time, right? Yes, I worked for Philipston for eight and a half years now um, at, at their library as their director. And you're their director over yes. there. Yes. Now, um, I do want to come back to uh, your added roles in a moment, but let's talk about libraries a little bit. Um, there are those who would say that because of the internet, libraries are dead. There are those who would say, well, actually, no, that's, that's not the case. And in fact, with so much reliance on the internet and with lots of folks, uh, depending upon your community, not having access to the internet to, to file job applications, to do homework, to um, do research for papers, to um, arrange trips, all those kinds of things, that usage has actually gone up. So I know you've, um, I, I'm sure you have a point of view on this. Of course. <laughs> and I know that we've been working on CW Mars. And so talk your way through, if you a little bit, about um, uh, just libraries in general and where they are in today's society, if you would. Sure. Um, it's correct with the internet. Um, information is is everywhere. It's at, literally at your fingertips. Um, however, it's not always good information. Not always accurate. Um, the library is is where people still rely on the professionals to steer them to the correct and accurate information. But over at least over my years um, working in libraries, I've seen uh, a trend towards as you say, a library not just being about the materials and the books, but a be, being about the services, the programs, um, the computers that, as you say, people may not have access to at home. If they have a computer at home, they may not have a printer at home. <laughs> um, so it, we are seeing a trend in libraries sort of adapting to be um, all things to all people. Uh, you don't have to be a bookworm or a reader, per se, to find something in the library that is of use to you. And funny you should mention the printer, because um, I have my laptop. I drag it to work. I drag it home. I drag it on vacation. Um, but I don't have a printer. So if I have something that I really need to print, a form that I need to do, um, a letter I need to send, uh, I end up emailing it to myself and then going to one of my local libraries <laughs> sure. <laughs> to print it out and collect it. And you know, they're 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 kind. I walk in and all I want to do is get to the <laughs> get to the 
workstation and print my document <laughs> out and go home. Um, yeah, so it, 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 but there are, um, uh, certainly I can afford a printer, but there are people who just don't have access to a full PC or a laptop sure. or something else at Exactly. Home. So what are your hours uh, and your, your staffing if someone should want your services now that uh, you've expanded a little bit? Uh, we're open Mondays from 10 to 7 p.m., uh, Wednesday from 9 to 5 p.m., Thursday from 9 to 7 p.m., and um, Saturdays from 11.30 to 2.30. Oh, okay. So um, it's, a, it's a good assortment of hours. Um, we also are mandated to have some evening hours um, by the state, so um, for, for folks that are working out of town, you know, maybe don't get back home until 6. Um, we have a great staff. Um, we have uh, three library assistants, uh, Karen Johnson, Luann Bankowski, and Janet Haley. Um, all wonderful people, very dedicated to the library. And you yourself are currently working 30 hours yes. a week. And those other positions, uh, what are those, 15 or so hours yes. each week mm -hmm. apiece? Right. Okay. So we're really only committing about 75 staff hours to the library as it is. Uh, and then I pull you away for this kind of stuff too. So <laughs> Now, so uh, let's talk about a little bit about um, if I want a book. Let's just stick on the books. And I know that you've been working and, and hope to finally um, be able to fully deploy CW Mars. Now, what, what does that actually stand for? <laughs> How does that work? And what does it mean to me as a library user? Um, CW Mars is a network of libraries across uh, central and western Massachusetts. CW Massachusetts, <laughs> okay. And so we've got central, western Massachusetts. Automated. Automated. Honestly. Ah, uh, uh, we got to know our acronyms. <laughs> okay, okay. It's one of those things that you just have done for so long. So know. it's basically the, <laughs> if, like from Worcester um, or whatever uh, uh, to the New York State border. Right. Um, so, so that's a, a, a computer linked network. It is uh, online database. You can you can go onto the CW Mars website and see virtually ev any material, any book in any library, um, search for them. If you know the particular, if you just know a subject, a keyword, find what you want. If you know you're gonna be in um, Northampton and you wanna know if they have a book or an item, you can check and see if they do. You can place a reserve for that item, have it waiting for you when you get there. Oh, so I can borrow from Northampton through this automated system? Yes. So if I do have a computer at home and many moons ago when I wanted a book entitled 50 Top Best Business Schools. <laughs> I had to make sure I could get to the library, hand it to them written out, they would do a search, they would call me a couple days later. Now I can do that at, at home if I'm a CW Mars member, is that yes. the way it works? Mm -hmm. and, and how do I get access to the system? Do I have to have a special card? Is it separate? Do I get it from you? You would have, a, a, it's a barcoded, library card mm -hmm. from any CW Mars library. If you had one from um, the city of Gardner or Westminster, you can use that anywhere. If you, if you have one from Templeton, you can use that. And, and it's, it's um, you know, you can check, check out material or check into materials, download eBooks. Um, you can do that at two o'clock in the morning if you want to. It's, it's a, a wonderful, wonderful network. And I get this from you. I come in and get a yes. A, so, so is it the same card? Basically, if I have a in the future going forward, if I have a Templeton Library card, it lets me into this CW Mars system. Yes. Now, that's. I, I just want to circle back for a moment because um, you raised a very important point that not everyone understands: the twenty-five hours and the conditions to be certified. That's not just to get the grant, is it? Isn't there? Isn't that tied to our residents' ability to use other libraries as well? Yes. Um, another, in addition to the grant, um, another benefit of 
being certified, meeting those requirements, um, is what they call a reciprocal borrowing privileges. It, it basically allows any resident of a town whose library is certified to visit any other certified library in the state and um, have their library card and privileges honored there. Now, let's, let's say, for instance, <laughs> I work in Worcester and I found the book I wanted in Worcester. Um, do I need to return that to Worcester, or does the CW Mars system, is it like the old, you know, many moons ago, showing my age, the old uh, uh, mobile library where I can return it to another library and it gets picked up and then you return it? How does the actual pick up and return work under today's system? Well, where every, every item is barcoded, so when an item is checked out, it's checked out in that system. Mm -hmm. and when an item is returned, any library that is automated, as, as we will be very soon, um, has the ability to check that item in so that it will be then transported back to its owning library. Oh, okay. You won't be fined for the, you know, the period of time it takes to get there. It's, it's checked in. And so, so I'm at home. I've got my library card. i got my CW Mars. Um, I find a book in Worcester. I happen to be down there for a, a doctor's visit or shopping or because I work there. Um, I've read it, I'm finished, but I'm going on vacation. I can bring it to the your public library. And, uh, and do you have a drop box outside? Yes. yes, we do. Put it in your drop box. You're going to zap it with the magic wand, discover <laughs> where it's home to, and then you have an internal process by which you get it back to exactly. the originating library. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's excellent. So, um, when is this, uh, this has been in the works for a while. I know yes. you and I have <laughs> talked about it, and I think in this year's budget, uh, when we were able to increase the hours a little bit, I think we also made some provisions uh, to, to try to get this. Uh, we had to add some workstations. We did. So when's, uh, when's the rollout? When is this, <laughs> when is, when is the, the, the final birthing of this uh, service to our community? I am hoping... Um, late July. We have recently had the, the electrical and cabling work done required to set up those two workstations. The, the last piece is uh, training. Um, some folks from CW Mars will come out. Um, they will actually spend an entire day at our library, um, hopefully helping us to see any of the various situations that could arise as our patrons come and go and training us to um, to use this system to circulate and then and then we're good. Okay. So watch you'll have an announcement oh, yes. on that uh, <laughs> uh, maybe a special push to you'll have to convert library cards that you currently have. Yes, we're have. currently doing that. Oh, so. you're doing that already yes. in anticipation. Okay. So watch watch for that uh, a press announcement and um, a particular push uh, this has the the potential to be just a a terrific program. My uh, library currently has it, and you're right. You can search anywhere in multiple. It can be a little overwhelming, actually, at times. If you don't know the exact name of the author or the exact name of the book and you're searching by subject, uh, it can be a little bit of information overload, but uh, you'll, you'll be able to uh, demonstrate it to people yes. and, and help them through it if they struggle with it Absolutely, at all? Absolutely, sure. Okay. So now, uh, this will be a, a, a new service. Uh, I'm not sure I, I call this a program, but you put on what I think of in terms of, of programs, whether they're, <coughs> excuse me, story hours or, or talks about particular types of books, or I don't know if you have a book club or anything like that. How do, what are those kinds of programs that you put on, and how, how do those kinds of things work? Well, uh, we, ha we have a preschool story hour that... Um, we hold now twice a week, um, and that follows the school year. So it starts in September, ends in June. Um, that's a fantastic program. For a lot of these children, it's their first experience of a formal type of setting where they take turns, they sit and listen, um, they do a project. Um, and for the moms or the providers, dads sometimes who, who bring those children to the program, it's, a, an, a, it's an absolutely amazing opportunity for, for them to connect and make friends with people. Because if you're new to a, a town like Templeton or any other rural small town, it's hard 
you don't have children in the school system yet to, to meet friends. And um, we had one mom who came in and, and she said, I, I don't know any of my neighbors. I've been here two years and I, I've, I've yet to meet a single person. So um, Storytime is a great program all, all around. Um, we run school vacation programs. We're having a big summer reading program. Uh, we have lots of little reading incentives and fun things for the kids to do. Um, you mentioned book club. We had a book club, gosh, I think it was about two years ago. It, it went along pretty well, and then it just kind of... Well, there's, there's always ebb and flow mm -hmm. um, with any kind of program that you, you try, and, and sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't. And then sometimes a couple years later, all of a sudden, there's a new spark. And, exactly. Uh, the, it takes off again for a while. I've given up trying to sort out <laughs> what really does work exactly yeah. and what doesn't. How many, how many, uh, so we have um, story time, which is kind of a, a preschool thing you do during the school year. And how many folks do you get to those, do you think? We've averaged, um, the Wednesday group was a little bit smaller. We maybe averaged about 10 children. Oh. Thursdays could be huge. Um, Steve came by a couple of times, and, and that's Steve Castle, yes. who, who uh, manages the uh, the cable access, uh, does a lot of the programming for us, and kind of um, uh, deals with his interns and the small amount of staffing that he has. Right, and and that was fun because some of the kids could then you know uh, watch themselves on television, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the Thursday group was sizable. It was probably fifteen to twenty kids per week. Excellent. Excellent. And the, the summer reading, uh, so so that's those are Wednesday, did you say Tuesdays and Wednesday Thursdays? And, Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday. And how do, I, uh, how do I find out about that? Do I need to, you know, like mid-August sign up? Is it just drop in as you want to drop in? Do I have any sense of what the book of the day might be? Um, um, especially, you know, my son was always a <laughs> curious George fanatic. Oh, yeah. He'd go anywhere for a good <laughs> Curious George story. Um, we, we advertise our story hour beginning um, on the library's page of the town website, um, in the newspaper, throughout the library, on Channel 8. Um, we don't do a formal sign-up. Um, and I've, over the years, I've, I've, in talking to moms and providers, I've found that... Um, that can sometimes really discourage someone. If right, you have a right. young child, maybe not feeling well one day, maybe sure, in a mood, sure. you know, you may feel like, well, I'm not going to go if they're expecting me to, to attend every week. Right. So we, we're pretty... So, so it's kind of a drop-in yes. situation. Okay. Now, the, the summer reading, is that in connection with the reading lists from the schools? Do you coordinate with them? Is that your own summer reading? Is it a challenge? What do I... What do I win if I read enough books? <laughs> um, well, we do coordinate with the schools to um, to offer any of the required reading that, that the classes have all the way up through the high school, Monty Tech as well. Um, but our summer reading program is 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 more fun. It, we do a we have a whole um, shelf full of little prizes that um, that children can earn raffle tickets towards if they read <coughs> for um, five hours or if someone reads to them for five hours, they get a ticket. And um, we also have a little, um, for the younger kids, read for beads. So if you read for an hour, you get to read for beads. Read for beads. Okay, you got <laughs> well, to help me out. What, what does that mean? We have a huge bucket of really cool beads. and oh, Like Mardi Gras type yeah, beads? Uh, yes. Like, like yep. Things. Yep. So if they read for an hour or someone reads to them, they can you know, dig in there and pick out a bead, and by the end of the summer, they're, you know, they're usually pretty proud of the necklace or, you know, bracelet or whatever they've managed to, to string. So um, so that's fun. And we, we are doing a lot of activities <coughs> and pizza and board games. A couple of nights, we're having a magic show, teddy bear picnic. So the schedule's all up on um, the website. And, and we keep saying the website. Do they... Do you have your own stand alone? Do they come to the town website and then just find you there and it'll jump over? What is, where do we want to tell people to look for the, the Boynton Public Library uh, on the web? Okay, um, we don't have our own website at the moment. That is something we're 
um, as one of our goals for the next year. Um, but for right now, all the library information is on uh, templeton1.org, which okay. is the town's website. So come to templeton1.org, click on departments, and look for the, the Boynton Public Library. Right. Perfect. Um, and we will be redesigning, um, if I can just do uh, an advert of my own for a moment. Uh, we will be over the coming um, fiscal year, uh, I, I don't know how long the project's going to take us, uh, converting uh, the town's website. Uh, it is, um, it, it's an older uh, version. Um, it's based upon when ba uh, everyone really used laptops or mm. PCs, uh, desktop workstations. Um, and uh, many folks today do everything on a mobile device, whether that's a, a tablet or a smartphone, or as my wife would call it, the smarter than me phone. Um, and that really takes a different kind of architecture and layout. So um, watch for an announce from us. If you would, we're going to be asking people the kinds of things that are important to them to be on the, the front page uh, so that we can have that uh, uh, information from you all in hand. Um, so that's that's kind of the, the Boynton Public Library in a nutshell. Um, uh, how many books do you have, roughly? <laughs> she has a bean counter. These are the, I'm a data kind of guy. These are I, the soft questions are important to me, um, but I'm also just you know your basic bean counter. I, I I have to do these reports every year. I I would guess we're around 12,000 volumes. And what kind of turnover do you have? I know there's kind of a standard measure of, you know, turnover, whether that's pieces per person. Um, it's not just total count, but how, do, how do, do you remember what that is and how we compare to others? Um, don't I don't really. Um, I know that, are you talking about our acquisitions and discarding? Usage, and, usage. Oh, usage. usage. Um, we keep rough standards. Um, I would say we circulate approximately between 1,000 and 1,200 items per month. Okay, so 1,200, 15,000. So basically, every man, woman, and child is in the library twice a year getting a book. <laughs> okay, so that, those are the kinds of things, Jackie. I'm sorry. That's, those are the kinds of things I understand. Um, now, uh, you also have uh, some improvements you hope to do uh, yes. a little bit at a time, picking away. Yes. Um, uh, and you've uh, started to look at what that improvement plan might be for the building itself. Yes. Um, a few years ago, um, we were left a sum of money, a generous sum of money, um, from the estate of Ann and Ed Nordforce. Ann was a library patron. Um, she was a friend, and um, we hope to, um, number one, address any of the structural issues of the building um, using that money, and then, um, and then give the place a little bit of a, a shine up. A little, a little freshening. Yeah. yeah. Gold paint, some carpet, or whatever right. need, but first roof um, uh, structure, any uh, moisture issues, exactly. that kind of thing to preserve the structure. Now. Um, in addition to the building where people come and go for uh, you know their, their, their books, their research needs, that kind of thing, um, what about our, our school students after, after school? Do we, do we have study groups? Are we able to help students out? Um, uh, because a lot of them, you know, once the school hour is done, they don't necessarily have a, 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 a good place to do their homework, especially if it requires some internet uh, research as part of their papers and such. Right. Um, at the moment, we don't have a formal after-school program. We have done a number of things off and on in the past. We've had a chess club, a uh, Lego club, little miniatures, uh, which is kind of like a strategy game club. Um, and that's the after-school piece is something in addition to the website that we have as uh, the trustees and I have as a goal. A, a longer range mm -hmm. goal. Um, <coughs> now, um, I know I'm really showing my age, but, uh, you know, they used to troop us all from the elementary school 
uh, over to the library and teach us how the Dewey <laughs> Decimal System worked um, and how to go hunt them down on the shelves. Um, and to never try to be helpful in returning the books. Um, how does how do we uh, introduce uh, our younger population to public libraries these days, when so much is on their smartphone, on their TV, on their laptop? Um, do, or do we have a new and, and growing user base once we get past the the story hour and the summer reading programs? In between, you know the the active older adults who are used to having public libraries. I would kill to have a thicker New York <laughs> Times, you know, things that you actually pick up and physically read. It's a challenge. Um, there is a lot of competition out there for kids' attention. For their attention, yeah. Um, but uh, what, what I really loved um, was uh, when the classes would walk over from Templeton Center School. And granted, there were only, you know, uh, kindergarten and first graders there um, in recent years. But when I first started at the library, um, I believe Templeton Center went to fourth grade, K to four. And um, I would send a sign-up sheet over to the teachers every month, and they would sign up for different slots of time to bring their kids over. And I did all those silly things with them, with the Dewey Decimals, and and had a whole stack of books. Fiction is it fiction? Is it nonfiction? And and um, they learned about the library in a fun way, and they learned that it it was a welcoming place, and not a place where somebody's going to shush you. It's a place where somebody is really going to be interested in what you're interested in, and and help you find that. Um, and I hope when the new elementary school is built that that those visits will resume. Well, it is being built. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it is currently, uh, I'm, I'm glad to say, on budget, on schedule, uh, and uh, unless something goes horribly awry, uh, should be reopened to student use uh, in August of 19. Right. So perhaps you can um, uh, reinvigorate some of that and, and reintroduce the the new generation to to the library that would be terrific. Now um, these are all the things that you do there, but you're also um, a welcoming and an available spot uh, for for groups to have a meeting or put on a discussion of their own if it's being done in conjunction with you and can be you know supported as public policy. Um, I think the um, is the historical commission. They do. They who, do. Else, who else meets uh, there in, in your uh, uh, quarters? Um, we have a few different uh, Brownie Girl Scout troops that meet there. Um, we have Historical Commission, Community Preservation Committee. Um, I think that's it at the moment. Um, but it's, it's a busy place after hours. So, so if you're a small uh, town uh, board or committee, um, and the rooms here are booked and, and you need a home for the night, uh, they could reach out to you and see if you can accommodate Absolutely. accommodate them. Now, in addition um, to all of these things that you've been doing at the library, we, we spent about a half an hour uh, uh, chawing on about, um, you have a new role come July 1, Madam Director. <laughs> Uh, uh, the uh, town has um, come to believe that we can uh, have a, a better synergy, that is to say, you know, one plus one hopefully can equal three, where when you have different groups working together, coordinating, building joint programs, um, uh, you know, you do this, I'll do that, where they're talking more often, uh, we, we think we can have some added value and improve uh, and uh, perhaps increase services to the community. Um, it's, uh, I had a couple months ago, uh, Laurie Wida, who was the health agent, and in addition, she's now the director of the Office of Development Services, which is planning and um, uh, conservation and zoning, and anything related to land use, so that when you have a land use question from wetlands to getting a building permit. You can go into that one office where the staff is, is together and works together. 
Uh, and we're uh, doing the same thing with what we call the Office of Community Services. So first, your hours go up. Yes. <laughs> You'll be full time with us now. Okay. Um, what are the, if you can recall, uh, what are the units that are within this Office of Community Services? And um, have you had some initial chats with people? I know that I've had a lot of one-off conversations with people in the group. Let's let's talk about what your new role is and how you envision rolling that out and what you hope to accomplish uh, at the end of the year. So if we're, if we're sitting here next year, what, what you would hope to point to as successes? Uh, well, the, the um, other units, departments that are involved in community service under that umbrella um, include senior services, uh, veteran services, culture and rec, um, historical commission, uh, a cable TV department and the library. Um, and what I, what I see the community service director position as really having this great opportunity to, to sort of link all of those departments. Each of those departments already has a very competent, caring person at the helm. Um, but the community services director um, will sort of serve as the team leader for all of those units be that that um, that are all providing services in one form or another to sort of the same group of people, um, overlapping in some cases, but um, and I I just see it as a way for us to, as you say, collaborate, um, work together to plan, to set goals, um, and to ultimately deliver the services that our departments. Are responsible for in in the the best way possible to the people in town. So more uh, more team leader and cheerleader than boss. Absolutely. Um, so as a for instance, you know, the Council on Aging may have a great idea, uh, and we do hear often about these things in the staff meeting. Um, but by having this group where you're meeting occasionally. Uh, Somebody might say, oh, I could piggyback on that to do that. And then that might have somebody else think about, oh, and then I could piggyback on to that. So it can be more of a continuum of services as opposed to one-offs. Is that Exactly, what yes. So how are you going to roll this out, Madam Director? How are you going <laughs> to? Uh, because, I mean, you did, you, you, you made a very important point. Uh, each of those units has a very competent staff doing a good job, uh, very dedicated in the, um, uh, even those units that don't have staff, like the Rec Commission, they've really right. uh, been quite excited, working quite hard the last year. So um, this isn't about rolling in and being the boss. It's about here's what it is. We need to talk. We need to work together. When the budget comes in, we need to make sure we have everything covered because that might be in your wheelhouse. We want to make sure it's not duplicated over here, but... But if something is needed in another unit to support that, we need to make sure that's right. that's there. So how are you going to uh, – many boards, commissions, and departments are used to working alone. They cooperate when they have something specific. But I, I think we've done more team building the last I two agree. years. So how are you going to roll this out? What, you, what is your thoughts? Well, I um, – again, I kind of go back to working at the nursing home. <laughs> um, I learned how to listen to people. I learned how to how to give people the feeling that they're being heard. And um, I think I have good relationships with all of the directors of those departments. Um, I don't think any one of them perceives me as a threat. And I think number one, we just we just all have to be talking. The meetings um, have to be something that we anticipate that we're that we want to make the most out of. Um, and for some of these smaller departments, the rec department, cultural, um, cultural council, um, they may have felt sort of they're on the margins. And I think that, um, that I don't want them to feel that way. I want them to feel that um, they have a seat at the table and that we're all um, together, we're, we're stronger and we're going to have that voice. 
So no, the, the cultural council, that, that's kind of a good one to, to point out because I came up and chatted with, um, well, I don't know, it was a year, year and a half ago, and they, they get a little bit of money from the state, and then it was kind of like, well, you know, they, they were off there, and a, a nice group of folks, mm -hmm. uh, very well-meaning, uh, working with the funds that they have. Uh, but I just got the sense that they wanted, that, that they were open to being a little bit more and hoping to get a little bit more bang uh, with their dollars. So uh, could you talk with folks about uh, what the Cultural Council is, how it works, and the kind of opportunity to help expand their role in conjunction with other members of this, this new team? Um, the Cultural Council, there's a Cultural Council in each town in the state, and they receive a certain sum of money to distribute to um, individuals or organizations. And that's from lottery, arts lottery tickets? Uh, or? Yes. Okay. And, and so every fall, um, they seek applicants for programs, events, um, and they stretch those dollars as, as far as anybody could. Um, they don't get a whole lot of money, and they, they really, they will partially fund programs. Um, to really make that money go as far as it can. Um, and I know I've uh, been talking to Pat Gale over at the Cultural Council about um, the summer concert series for next year, trying to brainstorm a little bit with her about hope, hope for how summer, we can, yes, right, series, okay. um, how we can get that off the ground. Um, and so, yeah, I th I, again, I think that they will welcome feeling a little bit more uh, connected somehow to uh, what goes on here at Town Hall and the selectmen and yourself. And they, they meet at your uh, yes, library Yes, they as do. Well. I forgot that. They yeah. do. Now, do we know if they have vacancies on their panel at present? I, I don't honestly know. I know there are a lot of boards in town that do. So. There, there are. There are. And uh, what we've been trying to do for anyone that's interested in uh, in the Historical Commission or the Recreation Commission um, or uh, uh, the Cultural Council, uh, any of these kinds of things. Uh, I'm trying to keep a current list up on the uh, town's website. If you're on the home page, uh, we have a button for paid volunteer <laughs> uh, and contract opportunities. Um, give us a call if you have any questions. We'll connect you with, with Jackie or with the chairman of the the Cultural Council or the Rec Commission, so you can get a sense of what kind of time commitment is involved. Uh, and the other thing we're trying to do is each select board meeting, I try to announce a, a couple uh, of them so that folks can see and, and hear. And uh, many of these things do rely upon that citizen volunteer. Sure. Uh, and without it, we wouldn't deliver half, I, I don't know if I'm half, but certainly there's a substantial portion of what I would call quality of life services. Exactly. Um, that we wouldn't deliver. Now, now, back to the library for a moment, sorry to jump around here a little bit, but you have an elected board, an appointed board? Our trustees are appointed. We have a three-member yeah. uh, board of trustees. We do have one vacancy at the moment. See, <clears> there's <throat> the, those are the kinds of announcements uh, we need to make. So if you uh, have had an interest in being on the uh, board of trustees for the Boynton Public Library. If you go um, go online, homepage, paid volunteer and contract opportunities, print out the uh, the volunteer interest form, uh, get it into the select board's office, and we'll get it to the appropriate uh, appointing authority, which in this case, I believe, is the select board. It yes. Is. Yes. Okay. Now um, let's talk a little bit about. Uh, you talked about summer concert series. Hoped for, Hoped for summer concert <laughs> series. That's something that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. They could take a year or more to get off the ground. Um, that's a collaboration of uh, library, cultural, um, rec, uh, um, you know, a concert on the green kind of mm. idea. What What are your early thoughts? Well, I um, again, where there aren't a whole lot of cultural council dollars, um, and there's a lot of competition for what's there. Um, I was thinking that it might be 
nice to open it up to maybe like these garage bands or, you know, amateur type bands that just simply want the exposure and they just want to play for someone. And um, I'd, I'd be willing to bet there's a few of those in town that we could, you know, entice and, and then maybe try to, you know, write a grant or two sure. to fund more of a semi-professional type of group. But, yeah. Now, now in one um, town, uh, the, the town I'm currently living, we actually have a, a, a lot of what I call the, you know, uh, a granola <laughs> crunching crowd and a lot of really into, you know, the music and the arts and um, the, the craftsman kind of thing. Uh, and we actually had somebody that was so interested in it uh, when they uh, first contacted me, I was a little bit skeptical. But they took the ball and ran on the whole thing. Great. So if anyone's really kind of interested in that, or if, or if you think, geez, um, uh, <coughs> I'd love, uh, you know, I got three guys that I get together with. I got a friend. He's got, um, you know, it's kind of acoustic jazz kind of thing. Um, I love this stuff. I just didn't realize that people got together at their homes and did it. I used to pay to be in a club to, <laughs> to listen to it. Um, can they reach out to you at the library? Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And what's the best way to email you? At this um, point? I can be reached at library at templeton one dot org. Okay. Or just give give me a call over there. Super. Now we have the uh, we've introduced uh, at this year's town meeting currently. Uh, most all the programs have to be budgeted for. So the swim program has to be budgeted for. If we're going to do sports, that had to be budgeted for, which um, did two things. One is uh, if you had over-enrollment, you might not have enough money. Mm -hmm. and the other thing was if you had an idea in July that you hadn't budgeted for last fall, you couldn't do it. You just might not have enough money to mm -hmm. do it. So we did introduce, and the town meeting was um, uh, kind enough to amend the ordinances to create the revolving fund. Uh, what, how's that going to work, and, and what's, what's your thoughts on the flexibility that that will, will give you to do programming that can react on pretty short turnarounds? Um, I think it's great. I think that, again, you've got people that are uh, part-time volunteers, um, sometimes trying to manage these departments. And so anytime you can free up the paperwork end of it for those people and just give them the room for the creativity and the, you know, getting in there and doing these programs, it's, that's going to work. So I, I think the restrictions being lifted from the fiscal year type budgeting is, is going to go a long way to help just generate more ideas and bring more things to fruition. And that allow for anything from um, uh, uh, last year, I think that uh, uh, we had a group of runners that um, go down for, I don't know whether it's the, the, the pre-marathon um, as a training or that, uh, we were able to put them together with the rec commission and use the, the town's bus to transport them. And we'd be able to put that money into the revolving fund and then pay those expenses. Yes, out of the revolving right. Fund. So um, let me just say that if you, uh, not to overload your inbox, <laughs> uh, but if you do have program ideas, uh, what's the best way for someone to kind of get a hold of you folks and work with you? Say, hey, have you thought of this? Have you thought of that? Do we do periodic surveys on programs um, that folks might be interested in? Do we just kind of go with the flow? How does that work so that we're trying to take the temperature of the community and, and design programs to, because again, trends change. They do, they do. Um, it, you know, again, it's it's hard in these small towns to, to, uh, to get the word out to um, solicit that kind of information. You know, you, you always feel like you're not hitting everyone. Um, I've found that um, Channel 8 has been great as far and as- Channel 8 is our public access yes. channel. Yes, um, getting the word out or kind of trying to get a sense of what people are interested in. We're hoping to um, 
create an online newsletter for the library. Um, I know the Senior Center has a newsletter. We could utilize that. Um, so I think, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different ways. And I think the main thing you want to communicate to people is that we're interested in their ideas. They, you know, those ideas are welcome. So you have a great idea, you know, throw it out there. I know uh, Steve and I have talked about um, an idea for a trivia bee here in town, which I think would be super fun and would really bring people together. And so it, it's just a matter of kind of um, bringing an idea from that stage of this would be great to how do we make it happen. What is a trivia? Trivia B is. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I go to trivia night, but normally it's, um, you know, a sandwich and a <laughs> couple rum cokes or something at the at the local pub. Well, um, I, I'm, I'm assuming this is not that. Well, it's. So it's, what is a trivia B? It's like a spelling bee, but okay. only it's um, trivia questions. And what what our vision was was to have you know teams of mm -hmm. people. Like maybe you'd have a team from the Board of Selectmen and maybe team from local businesses in town and and just have rounds of trivia questions where, where teams get eliminated and I mean we could make up t-shirts we could you know sell cookies it would and I think it would be a community builder it would be something to generate money for a project or as well as just you know really kind of kicking the morale up a little so, bit. So with the uh, potential for um, financing things off budget through exactly. the revolving fund uh, on these smaller programs. I'm not talking about grand, let's go build three new soccer fields, but trivia B, reading programs, book clubs, concerts on the common, um, film night in the park. Sure. Uh, there really isn't a limitation beyond imagination uh, and uh, some uh, dedicated uh, work uh, from uh, interested citizens. Right. So it really is quite a bit of possibility. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's what small towns are supposed to be mm -hmm. truly all about. I know folks drive further, work longer, um, many more. Uh, you're right. Um, uh, very simplistic, but, you know, for me on the weekend, I, am I going to kayak? bicycle or hike, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and there's just so many potential things for people to do, especially when we, if you're a little bit outdoors and like living out here a, mm -hmm. a little bit. So um, the Channel 8, um, if you're watching this on Channel 8, if you're curious about, um, and these programs are run on a recurring basis, but they're all stay on after a while, Steve's rotates the new stuff onto TV Channel 8, and the older stuff has to come off. Uh, but if you're interested in Talk of the Town or former select board meetings or planning board meetings, uh, there is an extensive archive of those uh, on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and Google Templeton Community TV. Uh, I think you can even subscribe to the channel so you'll get feeds of when new things get added. Um, um, if it's something of, of great interest to you, uh, I believe you can download it. Um, and if it's something you really need, we might be able to help you out. Uh, there's a small cost for our time and, and uh, material. Uh, but yeah, you can, you can go to uh, YouTube for that as well. Now, um, the, the cable, I, I do want to say that, you know, one of the sort of divisions, if you will, um, not divisions, but members of the team, uh, is the community access and, and communications because um, I've come to believe that the uh, folks such as yourself, Steve's group, Historical Commission, Scott Dill and the Rec Commission, they really do some great things, mm -hmm. of which many people are unaware. <laughs> Unfortunately. That's so true, yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, part of the challenge that I would give to you and the members of your team is to make sure we're getting out uh, the good word about everything that you're doing. Um, and if you see something that you think we can do better or um, a little more, 
uh, particularly if you'd like to help us out doing it, um, reach out either to myself uh, and I'll send it along or to uh, uh, to Jackie. So all this all this starts uh, July one. Yes. Um, and you'll have to dial back a, a touch in Phillips soon, I'm assuming. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Make us your, your primary. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll make it all work. But but you've you've been uh, in Phillipston for uh, for eight years. Are you able to do any collaborative programming? Are we able to partner with uh, any of our area libraries? Um, do you all meet once a month to talk about program ideas? Because we've got uh, in the immediate area libraries ranging from um, Gardner, Fitchburg, Lemonster to Phillipston, Royalston, Hubbardston. Um, it's quite a range of, of services. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of communication do you all do amongst uh, the area? There are lots of um, roundtable type discussions, meetings among um, s some of the smaller libraries um, out here in Central Mass. Very helpful. Um, everything from, you know, I've got this issue and I don't know what to do with it. What would you do? What have you run into this before? So you're not reinventing the wheel. Um, and yeah, we we are all on a group email, which um, <coughs> enables us to share that type of information apart from the roundtable mm -hmm. meetings, um, share uh, events that are coming up, um, post different um, different things that other libraries have going on. Um, and of course, there's always the resource sharing, and I feel like I have a unique uh, opportunity to do that in the two libraries that I take care of, because um, I can, in, in many states in this country, uh, unlike Massachusetts, there isn't a library in every city or town. There are regional libraries. Like we have regional school systems, so um, I am. I feel like I'm able to stretch the tax dollars that that both Phillipston Library and Templeton Library receive by kind of keeping that in mind when I'm purchasing materials. If I purchase a book on polar bears for Phillipston, I don't need to purchase that same book in Templeton. I can purchase a book but on what giraffes. About, what about, <laughs> but what about the fun geology books? What are we, what are we doing with that? I, want, I just want to, I, I, I'm just reminded we have, a, after every uh, select board meeting, we have a staff meeting and I kind of touch upon uh, what the select board did the night before and projects that are coming up and things of import and uh, the minute town meeting's over, I ask them if they're all ready for the fall town meeting. <laughs> Um, and, and then we do this, what we call round robin. And, and Jackie told me the other day about the upcoming program, and that's called? Reading Rocks. Re Reading Rocks. <laughs> now, um, talk to me. So there's this very specific program. Talk to me about Reading Rocks. <laughs> well, the Reading Rocks, or Libraries Rock, is the theme for the Massachusetts Summer Reading Initiative. Oh, okay, okay. And um, while I don't necessarily always you know, adhere to the theme every year. Um, some libraries do, um, but yesterday we were able to do our kickoff with a program called Reading Rocks, um, and it was in conjunction with Mock, and we Mock um, is uh, Monachusett Opportunity Council. Okay, I believe. great. Um, and and it was a uh, lovely woman came out from the Audubon Society and and uh, had all these great rocks for the kids to so learn about. And, and fool's gold, yeah. and <laughs> pyrites, and all these mica. And yes. I, I remember <laughs> doing that. Now, um, so she came out and did the first part of the program? She did the program yesterday, and um, it was kind of the kickoff for our summer events. And yeah. it was really a lot of fun. The kids had a lot of fun. She had some games, a couple of songs. It could be a great hobby. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it could be an entry into a career. A friend of mine um, became a geologist. Really? Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, and um, which is the foundation of civil engineering, structural engineering. True. Uh, so he's really done, um, you know, from many moons ago to now retiring, the whole, the whole gamut. Well, look, um, Jackie, thank you very much. Uh, this okay. has been Jackie Prime, uh, who's currently the library director. Uh, and on July 1, picks up an additional title of the Director of 
community services, which will be a, a, a more expanded team meeting and collaboration of our uh, different units. We've got some great, uh, not uh, too late to sign up for any of the, not sign up, but to participate in any of the summer reading oh, programs. come on over. <laughs> Just go online, templeton1.org, look for Boynton uh, Public Library, uh, mid-August, look for um, information on story time, the preschool uh, twice a week sessions uh, for uh, your youngsters in which not only do they get exposed to literature and an opportunity to have some fun, but uh, you get a chance to mix with other parents that you might not meet otherwise. Um, and we've got that vacancy on the uh, Library Board of Trustees. We've got some other openings. Um, so uh, hope uh, hope uh, you've learned quite a bit today. I um, hope you involve yourself in some of those programs and uh, feel free to reach out and see how you can assist or, or help generate enthusiasm over your idea. Uh, my name is Carter Terenzini. I'm the Town Administrator for Templeton and I thank you for spending an hour with us.